Let's talk about the January 6th investigation. I wanted to ask you because we now know uh, that former President Donald Trump's lawyers are in talks with the Justice Department about the federal investigation into January 6th. Right. And as you know, there have been other developments uh, regarding the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, and so on. Do you think it's time uh, for your committee to hand off uh, this investigation to the Department of Justice? Uh, has the committee or any of the members of the committee uh, given any consideration of that? Have you heard that conversation that uh, come up, that since the DOJ has made some progress here, appears to be making progress, Mayor Garland, the Attorney General, seems to be saying they're moving forward, um, that maybe it is time for the January 6th committee to wind things down. What do you think about that? Well, we have different uh, objectives. Their objective is to uh, see if there's evidence sufficient to indict people and prosecute them for a crime. Uh, our mission is to find the truth, tell it to the American people, and then make suggestions for legislative changes that would prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again. Uh, we, were, as the chairman has announced, are going to have just a few more hearings. Uh, this, probably in September, we are going to issue a report. New information is coming in. So the two uh, efforts are not in conflict with each other. Uh, they're complementary, I believe. And do you think you're uh, lighting a fire a little bit under the Justice Department by keeping the investigation going? It's hard to know. I mean, they don't report into us, nor should they. Uh, the Department of Justice and prosecutors generally uh, don't give press releases. They don't consult with legislative bodies. If they have evidence, they let you know by uh, indicting someone. So we'll find out, along with the rest of the world, if they think a crime is committed and there's evidence to prove it. Meanwhile, we will finish our work and um, I think the American public will be well served by both efforts, I hope. And there are clearly more uh, questions that need to be answered about the missing Secret Service text. I know that's one yes. of the aspects that your committee will be looking at from the day of the Capitol attack. Um, the agency has now given investigators the personal cell phone numbers of agents. Uh, that is a very unusual step. Uh, can you confirm whether the committee uh, was given some of that information or is in the process of perhaps taking a look at that information? Well, let me just say, as you know, we don't publicly discuss the evidence under our rules and we haven't voted to release it, but we are going to follow this to the end. I'll tell you, you know, the Secret Service was told by the four committees of jurisdictions before the J6 uh, J committee existed to preserve all the evidence. And 11 days later, they erased it. Uh, the inspector general found out about it and sat on that information and didn't tell the a committee for more than a year. And then when forensics started, uh, told the uh, Secret Service to stop the forensics, which is outrageous. And the, the other thing of concern is that, you know, we were working with the Secret Service. They were s sending over information. It wasn't until we issued a subpoena that hundreds of thousands of records started appearing. So I have some concerns. This is not a good look, Jim. And uh, I want to give credit to the Secretary of Homeland Security, who has uh, named a, a, a person of tremendous integrity as, a, as an adjunct general counsel over the department to make sure this is done right. We need to get yeah. to the bottom of it. Maybe it's innocent, but it seems like a lot of coincidences. Well, sure. And, and why not haul the director of the Secret Service in front of your committee? Well, we're not ruling anything out. Um, but we are intending to get to the bottom of this and uh, just to get the truth. It's a, it's a concern, as well Would as... Would that be a reasonable the, request uh, to make, to talk to the director of the Secret Service? No, we don't object to that, uh, but I think we're, uh, you know, we're going to dig in and get all of the documents. Whether or not he knew about that, uh, you know, we don't know, but we are, let me just say this, without announcing our witness list, we're going to talk to everybody who can let us know what, what we need to know. All right. And these texts are just one example of missing Trump White House records. I, I'm sure right. you're aware of this exhaustive list, but they, to remind right. our viewers, we're talking about missing texts from top Trump national security officials, torn up White right. House documents uh, recovered by the National Archives, gaps in Trump's uh, call logs on January 6th, papers flushed down the toilet, 
uh, and so on. The list goes on and on. Well, and uh, Mark Meadows burning documents in his fireplace. Don't forget that. Well, let's not well, let's not forget that one either. So the, this was a concerted effort inside the Trump administration to make sure there was no paper trail, was it not? Well, it doesn't look good, does it? Um, and you know, the cover up always always gets you. Not not always just the misconduct. Do you think we're ever going to get to the bottom of that? It's our intent to get to the bottom of it. You know, every time a text is sent, there's the sender and the person who receives the text. So we're going to track this down. We're going to use forensics. We're going to be going to the telecoms to see if they can recover this material uh, and the like. I mean, by the way, we don't know what's in it, but we fully expect to get or hope to get the um, all the text messages sent by uh, Mr. Jones, who just lost his uh, defamation case, um, you know, we're going to find out, get to the bottom of this, and then let the American people know what we've found out. Well, I was just about to ask you about that. An attorney for the families of Sandy Hook victims says the January 6th committee and federal investigators have asked for Alex Jones's phone records, who you just mentioned. Um, what, what do you want to look for in those records? Well, we know that uh, his... Uh, behavior did incent um, some of the January 6th um, conduct, uh, and we want to know uh, more about that. We don't know what we're going to find in the text because we haven't seen them, uh, mm -hmm. but we will look at it and learn more, I, I am sure. And what about the, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Ginny Thomas? Um, is that now no longer going to be a, a, an avenue that you'll pursue? Uh, there was the prospect that she might be interviewed at one point. What's the latest on that? Well, in, when we indicated we wanted to hear from her, she made a public statement that she was eager to come in. She looked forward to talking to the committee. Subsequent to that, it's been publicly reported that she's retained counsel. Uh, and so there is discussion but she's never said publicly or so far as I'm aware through her counsel that she has anything other than the intention she first stated, which is to come in and talk to us and uh, to be happy to talk to us. So we look forward to that. And uh, th that's all I can say at this point. And I appreciate you uh, indulging me as I jump around on, on a lot of subjects here. But I think it's very important to bring up the fact that the former president, Donald Trump, addressed CPAC. Uh, over the weekend. Yeah. And as you know, there was this informal CPAC straw poll. It's not a scientific poll, but it is sort of a measuring stick uh, for uh, presidential candidates, as you know. And when asked, you know, who the attendees preferred to see as the nominee in 2024, Donald Trump got 69% of the vote. Uh, in February, he got 59% of the vote. That means the conservative support for Trump has gone up uh, since these yep. January 6 hearings. And I'm just wondering, how do you explain that? And, uh, you know, what, what do you make of the prospect that you have potentially uh, somebody in Donald Trump who incited an insurrection, um, who has not shown any remorse for it, who continues to lie about the 2020 election, potentially positioning himself as, as the uh, nominee of the Republican Party in the next presidential election? Well, I don't know who attends... Uh, that uh, convention. I think there are people who are pretty extreme. I think they had, um, you know, the pillow guy there and some, you know, pretty extreme individuals. Um, whether or not that reflects normal Republicans in the country, I'm in no position to say. I will say this, that as I uh, travel around, Republicans, regular Republican voters are coming up to me in great numbers, thanking me uh, for the January 6th uh, committee work. And uh, they always say, I'm a registered Republican and I voted for Trump, but thank you for what you're doing. It's a very interesting phenomenon I've found. Uh, from time to time, Congressman, we hear that as well. Uh, there are a lot of folks, uh, it seems, who are afraid to take on uh, the former president inside the Republican Party, but we've seen a couple on your committee who have done just that. Uh, thank you very much, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. Uh, we always appreciate you coming on.